Hey there, Penguin and Magic fans, Eric Tate here, and this is my top 10 magic tricks for 2023. I'm super excited to put this list out and, and share it with you guys because 2023 was a crazy year for magic. There was some amazing uh, products that were released, uh, some really cool books and projects, and uh, I just wanted to sort of go through my top projects of the year and share them with you. And uh, I can't wait to see uh, what you think about that, or if you think I missed something, let me know in the comments below. Before we dive into the list, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified whenever we put up more content like this. With all that said, let's get into my list. Number 10 on my list is one that squeaked in right at the end of the year. It's Corner Piece by Steve Langston and Sean Ridgway. This is an awesome torn and restored piece by piece restoration. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, you take a, a playing card, playing card can be signed, it's very clearly torn into four pieces and then one at a time you put those pieces back together. First two pieces touch and then three and then the fourth one you touch it to the very top and it sticks where it's completely, it looks like it's almost like a like a Tetris piece or something, it's insane. That fourth piece slowly slides down and then you seal it back up all together and then you can immediately hand the card out for examination. This is a really cool piece of magic and I like it for a couple different reasons. One is that Steve, uh, Steve approached me at a magic convention a few years ago, which I don't know if a lot of you know this, one of the places we find a lot of these projects is that magicians will approach people who work at Penguin and say, hey, do you think this would be a good product? We, he showed it to me and I immediately fell in love with it. And then he shared with me the method and I got even more excited because uh, I've always wanted to do a piece by piece card, rest, uh, torn and restored card, but I've always had a little bit of trouble with a couple of the restoration phases. They're just tricky and difficult. Like it's, it's not easy stuff. But the gimmick that these two develop together really helps to solve a lot of those issues. It makes some of those uh, restoration moments extremely magical. And then you just get this like really wild final phase where that piece moves down by itself. Uh, the tutorial is really cool too because I mean, it's almost two hours long. They share with you a whole bunch of different ideas in addition to the basic handling. Uh, but this is a trick that I got to work with them on and a road test myself and I'm putting it into uh, the restaurant set that I do in uh, Walk Around every week. But Corner Piece is such a cool trick and that's why it's on my list. I was worried that it wasn't gonna make it but it squeaked in like right on the last day of the year is when it was released. So Corner Piece, check it out. Number nine on my list is Chop Shop by John Bannon. I love a good packet trick, and John Bannon is undoubtedly one of the best packet trick creators of the modern age. If you go back through some of his old books like Smoke and Mirrors and Possibilia and Dear Mr. Fantasy, there's some really cool tricks that have some really odd left turns and you get a ton of magic out of just a few cards. And Chop Shop is really interesting because it takes advantage of the same beats and routine structure of a Chop Cup routine, but it applies it to a three card Monty style effect, which is just so much fun. And when I was out, so A, I get to be in the tutorial with John Bannon. So John is teaching me, John is one of my favorite magicians. I grew up reading his magic and so getting to work with him now as a performer in my own right is just a huge treat for me. Uh, but then going out and getting to perform this effect that John taught me personally and getting big reactions with it is super fun. Uh, this is actually uh, like the second or third John Bannon packet trick that I've gotten to work on over the last couple of years. And just every time one crosses my desk, I get super excited. And Chop Shop was something really special, especially because of how easy it is to do. And that's something that's been very fulfilling for me to hear from Penguin fans who've bought Chop Shop, is they just can't believe how much magic you get out of basically one move the entire time. So it's, uh, I love teaching magic and I love sharing great tricks with people and it's just definitely, I know a lot of people had their confidence boosted this year because they were able to get big reactions out of uh, relatively few uh, uh, pieces of sleight of hand with just a really strong routine. Uh, it, it's, I mean, Chop Shop is super good. This obviously could have been higher on the list because if you just, I'm sure you're watching some reactions right now of it. I mean, just people love this trick uh, when they see it. It goes down a weird rabbit hole that then just like catches you out of left field with suddenly the aces are everywhere and it's just, it's so much fun. So number nine is Chop Shop by John Bannon.
Number eight is another small packet trick. It felt like there were so many great packet tricks that came out this year uh, that it was, it was hard to choose just one. Uh, but my buddy Eric Casey put out something called POW, Perfect Oil and Water. I love this trick. Eric shared it with me uh, during a Zoom session we were having, and I immediately asked him if I could take video and share it to the team, uh, because I was just like, you guys have to see this. This thing is so cool. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Eric's work, he's had some other uh, really fascinating uh, pieces of magic, particularly his big hit was Poker Test 2.0, and it allows you to basically just spread cards and make lots and lots of magic happen. Well, for perfect oil and water to work, there's a lot of, um, shall we say, uh, stack and mathematic things that you have to figure out about the way the cards go together and the way they're gimmicked. And Eric really dove in head first uh, with the help of uh, some other folks and, and figured out exactly how to do it. So you have three red cards that are red backed, three blue cards that are blue backed. You can actually interlace them. John Michael Hinton has a really nice handling of that where you can show them uh, front and back and then put them in uh, interlaced and then you square them up and when you spread them they've immediately sorted out all the reds on one side, all the black cards on the other and then you can show it on the back too where it's uh, red and blue because the black cards are blue on the back and the red cards are red on the back. It's a really, really fun trick. It's visually stunning. Uh, you can do lots and lots of different uh, ideas and presentations with it and I've been performing it a lot here at the P3 Magic Theater. So if you don't know, here in Columbus, we have a great theater where we invite magicians to perform for the public all the time. And we actually have a brick and mortar magic shop out front, which is really cool. And it contains all the tricks that we sell here at Penguin Magic, all the stuff that we create right here in Columbus, Ohio, you can buy in our shop. And so for the lay audience, I'm always interested in getting new people interested in magic, especially because we also have a magic club that meets here in the theater. And at the end of every show that I host, I always take an opportunity to do one very simple trick that anybody could do uh, so that they can go right out into the shop, buy it, and start their own journey on magic. And POW is the one that I use. It's always the one that I'm showing off to audiences. And it always gets a, a really great big reaction, especially because it like plays up here near the face. Uh, and again, you know, I, I've heard from so many people who've come to the theater and picked it up and they've said like, wow, this was a great trick, what can I get next? And so it's, uh, it's not just a fantastic effect that Eric Casey has put out, but it's also a really great introductory trick uh, to get new magicians into our art. And so that's why POW made my list for this year. Number seven is another packet trick. Again, it felt like there were a million packet tricks that came out this year and all of them were great. Number seven on my list was Mo Monty by Max Maven. Now, obviously we sadly lost Max Maven this year. Uh, you know, he had a, had a long battle with some health stuff uh, and it was very sad. Uh, but I was very fortunate to get to work not just on this effect, but also I got to sit with Max and find out why he loved the trick so much. Uh, and Mo Monty was an exploration by Max Maven in the three card Monty plot or the color Monty plot, but trying to see exactly how much magic he could get out of just three cards. Uh, and there truly is only three cards in this. It's a really beautifully structured routine. Uh, it gets some really great reactions because it's a little bit of a confessional trick, like you're sharing how the Monty works, uh, and then it just sort of comes in and hits him in the face with that surprise ending with the words appearing on it. Uh, and getting to share this, the, the information about the trick that Max shared with me when we sat together uh, is just something really special to be able to, to keep that along and, and sharing it with other people. Uh, so, you know, yeah, there were some crazier tricks that came out this year, but you know, sometimes something's gonna hit you in the heartstrings, and for me, it really was working on Momonti. Uh, Max will be missed, uh, but we can continue to keep doing his magic forever and ever and ever, and we totally should, because he's such a good creator. Momonti is uh, on the list this year. Number six on my list this year is a trick that I didn't actually get to perform, but getting to see this project come to life was unbelievable. It is the amazing Jonathan's knife through arm. Uh, I was very fortunate to get to work on the shoot uh, of the Amazing Jonathan's lecture a number of years ago. Uh, so I got to meet him and hang out with him and uh, see the original knife, you know, meet his wife uh, and spend, you know, she's still a good friend of mine. And so getting to work with them uh, to get this knife into production 
was really fun. Uh, because A, it's just a great prop. If you look at other sort of knife through arm style effects, uh, you know, the knife like visually grows longer and you can tell how it gets thicker. Uh, I mean, Jonathan used it as a gag, but he also took it very seriously in that it needed to look good. And this thing is just like the Cadillac of gruesome, bizarre comedy uh, effects that you can do on stage. It's so good. It's so well designed. All of the really wonderful elements that Jonathan put into his original knife are there. And then the Penguin manufacturing team and the gimmick building team really went above and beyond to make this thing feel great, look great, uh, you know, last a lifetime. And we were able to get Dan Harlan in to film the instructional materials. So you learn not just how to do it, but also like Dan's signature like blood formula, which is just wild to have. And he teaches you how to clean the knife and take care of it. Uh, and so just being able to be on a team that is able to take a prop from a legend, to work with that legend when he was still alive and continue to work with his family after he passed away and get it out there in a way that is not only respectful but also carries the art forward is just really cool. Um, so, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to perform it, but it is, it is a really awesome thing that we're able to bring it out this year. And that's why Knife Through Arm is number six for me. Coming in at number five is a project that I've been working on with Penguin since 2019. There have been a number of us here involved in this project, and uh, it's been a long road, but I'm very excited that we're finally here, and that is The Dragon Scale by Penguin Magic. This thing is so cool. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, it is a, a, a very sensitive scale that is hidden inside of a card box. And it's super smart and can talk to your phone. So it, it knows the stack of cards that's on top of it and it can sense down to a single playing card how many cards are removed from it. And then it can secretly feed you all kinds of information. Not only the card that it was cut to, but how many cards are in the spectator's hand, the sum of all the pips, how many red cards and black cards. The list is endless. And it was really interesting to be on the team that was developing this because we had to approach it from so many different angles. Uh, there's a number of theaters that I get to perform at uh, around the country over the year and I would take the Dragon Scale to every one of them and road test it, helping uh, to provide feedback to the technical team. And so we discovered all kinds of different things that you just couldn't do unless you put that kind of effort into it. Uh, and then getting to like work with you know with Nick Lacapo and Seth Race and uh, all the other people to to come up with routines and figure out exactly how to make it really great and then also the fact that we are going to continue to support it and create additional routines for it as years go by it's really awesome that uh, Penguin Magic is getting to be able to develop uh, you know electronic magic that is really cool and that it's like it's not just cool but reliable and durable and tested so it's you know I it's just really fun to be able to play with that. I'm a bit of a nerd at heart. I'm, I'm always like uh, tinkering around with little you know, robot kits and stuff like that at home uh, in my spare time. And so getting to like be a part of the development of the Dragon Scale team and be able to like see where it needed to be fixed or where we needed to change stuff was really cool along the way. Uh, and that's why it's in the top half of my list. Uh, the, so it's, it's just really awesome. You need to check it out. Number four on my list is one of my favorite creators, Roddy McGee, and his long-awaited trick, Lucid. This thing is unbelievable. I first got to play with it at the Blackpool Magic Convention, and then again uh, at Magi Fest and Magic Live, and getting to perform this for magicians was super fun. What it is, is a plastic sandwich baggie, like a Ziploc sandwich baggie, that can be used to switch playing cards, billets, dollars, uh, all kinds of anything flat and small that can fit in there, you can switch it. And not just switch it, but like visually change it. You can also make stuff vanish and appear. Uh, this is one of those things that like only Roddy McGee could dream this up. And the way it works is really cool, really satisfying. And so learning to, learning to actually get that to happen was awesome. But then taking it out and performing it, especially you know, when we demo things at Magic Live and Blackpool, you know, there's thousands of magicians here, and so it's, in, and they'll, 
come see it. They'll go get their friends, especially if it's super visual, and they'll, they'll bring their friends to see it. So we'll do it. So I mean, I think I did Lucid probably two or three thousand times last year. Uh, like no word of a lie. That's a conservative estimate how many times I demoed it because of all the people at these conventions, and it is it just the visual reactions are amazing. But the, also the different places it can go. You know, making a card vanish from the bag and reappear on the table, making the cards change places, transpositions. Uh, there's some really cool torn and restored stuff you can do with it. Roddy's uh, got a card to a possible location with it that is just spectacular. And the fact that you could use it to switch notes, bills, uh, that sort of puts it in this world of a utility device where you're not just doing a trick with it, it can be the integral part of the trick, it can be the magic moment. Uh, it's really an amazing trick, and so getting to perform it as often as I did, that's why it's so high up the list, because it may not have made it like directly into my show, but it is definitely something that I've got in the back of my mind whenever I need to solve a problem uh, with a playing card on stage. So real quick, I just wanted to take a moment to do some honorable mentions. There were some things that should have made my list, uh, man, if it would have been like 15 or 20 uh, things that would have been on my list, or uh, are just sort of like larger projects that I wanted to sort of shout out because they were really good. First and foremost is Nemesis Deck by Nick Lacapo. I'm so excited whenever Nick brings one of his own creations because I've seen him beating people up with this for years. Uh, we get together here at, uh, we have a Magic Club meeting here. Uh, the IBM meets at the, the Penguin Magic Studios uh, every month, and Nick shared this with me at one of those Magic meetings, and it, it floored me, because I, I had no idea how it worked. And the, the way the routine works, uh, the, the way it's constructed so that you can leave everything examinable is just nuts. Uh, and then there were some books that came out this year that I wanted to shout out. Uh, first of all is John Armstrong's How to Win. If you're a close-up magician looking to move uh, onto a stage and sort of get into those bigger rooms, uh, How to Win by John Armstrong is essential reading for that. Uh, I got to write a couple of the routines for it for John as well, so it was just really fun to be a part of that project. The Pages Are Blank by Michael Feldman. Check out that book on Penguin Magic. Michael Feldman's a good friend of mine, and he does some crazy magic, and uh, The Pages Are Blank is sort of his exploration into some really fascinating, uh, man, he's doing stuff with signatures that no one else is doing. That book is really good, and I'm super excited for you to check it out. And of course, the last one uh, is You're All Terrible by Harrison Greenbaum. Um, I think it's sold out everywhere, but if you can lay your hands on a copy, uh, <laughs> Harrison Greenbaum is hilarious and he's a great magician, but he also knows how to put a show together. You should definitely, if you want to improve your magic, this is sort of, this is, it's just a, a great book on how to be a better person and a better uh, magician. So uh, check all that stuff out. Honorable mentions, all really good things. Let's move into my top three. Number three on my list is a product from an amazing creator out of South America. Defaced by Martin Braesas. This trick is awesome. It's a fully gimmicked deck where you bring a deck of cards out, you show a blue deck, uh, you have somebody select a card from it, the card is put back in, then you turn over the top card so it looks like the deck is face up, and then when you spread through the cards, the deck is face up except for their selected card. You set that aside and then you reveal that the entire deck is now a red deck, even though the card that they picked is blue, and then you turn it over again and the entire deck is blank. All of the faces are blank. It's not often that I want to play with a deck that is fully gimmicked, but when I'm going to do that, I want it to be like a little tiny routine in and of itself, and Defaced hits all of the right notes. It's, there's lots of magic packed into an incredibly easy to do routine that is really well thought through. Uh, it's no secret that some of my favorite magicians these days, especially card magicians, are all coming out of South America. I think there's some really special stuff going on down there. And Martin Braesas is one of my favorite creators out of South America. Every time he, uh, we get to work, with Martin here at Penguin, and you know, we're like, hey, who wants to work with him on this trick? I, my hand always shoots right up in the air. Uh, I got so many compliments from people at various conventions on Deface, and they were like, man, this is a really great trick, and I was like, don't tell me, tell Martin, because he did all the work. I was just the guy who got to teach it. Uh, but I still do Defaced uh, in a number of my shows, especially like if I'm gonna be doing a corporate gig and I need to save something really special for the booker or the CEO of the company or something, Defaced is one that I can put in my back pocket and know that I'm gonna be able to hit them over the head with tons and tons of magic. And it was just so much fun to do 
over and over again this year that even after we were done filming the project, I still found myself bringing that out with me when we were filming tricks because it's just such a strong piece of magic that's really fun to do. And that's why for me, defaced is number three. Number two on my list is not a trick, but a series of books. Letters from Juan. That, how often do you get to see brand new, never before seen material from Juan Tamarez? I mean, never. That just never happens. And I, uh, every time one of these books dropped, I immediately bought one uh, off of Penguin. So I've got all six. I read through them all. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, there's some really new, uh, new fun ideas from Mnemonica. There's some really fun uh, gambling stuff, uh, some basic slights, some oil and water stuff. There's some really cool uh, progressive transformations with a gimmick card that comes with one of them. And then some of the essays in there are really cool too. Uh, Juan Tamarez is... You know, there's a reason he's a giant in our field, uh, and being able to go through those books and find something new, and, and just knowing that he is still out there creating uh, new stuff is awesome. And it's hard for me to point to just one thing in those books, and so I decided to cheat a little bit and just collect all six and make them number two. Because again, brand new tier from Juan Tamarez. How often is that gonna happen? Uh, it, it's just so good, and that's why it's number two on my list. All right, that brings me to my favorite piece of magic this year. And this is something that I've got friends who do it in their shows. Uh, I have wanted to put it in my show, and I was getting ready to buy it from Angelo before he put it out for mass market. And that is On Edge by Angelo Carbone. If you've never seen this before, you build a card castle, and uh, you build it like pretty quickly in front of your audience. Then you start to take it apart from the bottom until it is only the, the top you know, two, three layers are balanced on the edge of just two playing cards that are down to a single point. This is a really, really clever thing. Uh, it's a really amazing bit of magic that you used to have to buy directly from Angelo Carbone. You had to like find him, get a hold of him, you know, and uh, be able to buy it from him. It was tremendously expensive, uh, you know, because he had to hand make every one. Uh, and so I was, you know, I was literally, I'd, I had an idea of how I was going to put it into my formal close up show. Uh, and then he released it, you know, the whole thing through Murphy's, which was great. And so I was excited to get it, but I was even more excited about the execution of the product. This is one of those. Um, this is not a simple trick that you're just gonna pull out and start doing immediately. It takes some practice. And may I say, Javier, hats off to you, sir, on your teaching of this. It was very clear, very easy to understand. Uh, as someone who teaches a lot of magic myself, it's always great to see another great teacher of magic uh, in a product like this that is so good. Uh, but I think something that's kinda gotten overlooked with this is that you get two of the product in the package. There is a practice set and a performance set. Because I don't want to go too much into the method because it's not mine to give away. But to be able to immediately take this out of the box, watch the tutorial, and then take it out where the cards are in the order they need to be and you can follow along as soon as you open the box and be able to do the effect is amazing. Uh, you know, I actually, mine came in time for Christmas. I was down visiting my family and everyone else went to bed and I got out of the kitchen table and was building a card castle right there with Javier and doing Angelo Carbone's amazing trick. I mean, just like that. Um, you know, it takes some practice, but it's well worth it. But then when you're done with the practice set, there's the, the real set that you're going to use for your show, right? So that's, this is something that I, I know that we've talked about here uh, at Penguin and something that I think we should do with some, uh, some products is being able to, when it, when a, in a high value project like On Edge, being able to give somebody something that's ready to go immediately and then another thing that is gonna be like the show ready, the practice version and the, and the show version, just such a smart idea. So good and so well executed. And I can't wait to put On Edge in my show. I'm just having fun playing with it at my desk right now because it's just, it looks so good. I can't, I can't emphasize enough. When you put it together, like, even with the practice one, I was fooling myself because this thing looks amazing. Uh, so if you haven't yet, check out On Edge by Angelo Carbone because for my money, it was the best piece of magic that came out in 2023. That's it. 
That's my favorite magic from 2023. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. I know that Penguin has some awesome magic coming out in 2024. I've been talking to the creators and working with some people. Uh, some really, really fun stuff is around the corner. Uh, looking forward to seeing all of you at conventions throughout the year. And uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite magic of 2023 was. You know, did uh, I get the ordering of my list wrong? I mean, I don't think I did because it's my list. <laughs> but let me know uh, your favorite magic of 2023. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified when we put out more awesome magic uh, and more videos right here on Penguin. Thanks so much for watching. On behalf of everyone here at the P3 Magic Studios and Penguin Magic, thanks again, and we'll see you next time.